High Impulse have completed yet another successful engine test, but are Saxavort in trouble? Plus, Spain's Mura 1 is rolled back to the pad, and AAC Clydespace engage in a joint European project. All this to come and more in another Space News Update, so stick around, and let's get going. Welcome back everyone, and after the excitement of the past month or so with India's deep space missions, it's time to come back west with UK and European spaceflight news. And we start with High Impulse Technologies, the German rocket manufacturer set to become the first to launch from Saxavord, when they released this video on X, formerly Twitter, last month, showing the completion of the final full duration test of their SR-75 rocket motor, the Hyplox 75. This test has placed them firmly on the path to flight readiness, and with them already having been granted a launch license by the CAA back in July, High Impulse are now all set to light this puppy up. Vertically, that is. The SR-75 is a suborbital sounding rocket that will launch to an altitude of around 47 kilometers and test key technologies to be used on their larger orbital SL-1 rocket, including that Hyplox 75 motor, which is a hybrid rocket engine. It uses a combination of solid paraffin-derived propellant and will be beefed up with an injection of liquid oxygen, giving it a boost in thrust and, crucially, the ability to be thrust controlled. Traditional solid rocket motors, like the SRBs used on the Space Shuttle, SLS and Ariane 5, work by lighting a solid propellant, giving an instant and very powerful source of lifting power. However, once lit, they do not stop firing. Hybrid motors, on the other hand, have much more control. They can be stopped, and by adjusting the amount of liquid oxygen thrown into the mix within the engine, you can increase or decrease the amount of thrust as required. Now, this is a technology that's been developed in various stages of completion since the 1930s, with perhaps the best example coming with Virgin Galactic's Spaceship 2. The Sierra Dream Chaser was also set to use hybrid motors initially, but this has been dropped in favour of liquid engines. I'll actually have a lot more coming on High Impulse and their rockets in a video that I'm going to be dropping here pretty soon. It's going to be good, and it's one of my favourite deep dive videos that I've ever done, where I compare High Impulse's SL-1 with a few other rockets due to launch from the UK in the next year or so. So, shameless plug, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out. Now, with all the excitement from High Impulse, you'd think that things would be the same with Saxavord Spaceport. However, since my last video on those two, things have gone a little bit quiet. So the question is, should we be worried? You see, an article recently dropped from Andrew Parsonson of European Spaceflight following an article that ran in the Shetland Times. There was a report that following the amazing progress made at the site over the summer, a number of construction contractors had been sent home, with question marks over payments and the amount of cash actually in the Saxavord bank account. Now, I'm not going to dive too deeply into the whole financial history of Saxavord, and quite frankly, Andrew did a great job with his research, so I don't want to impede on that in any way. But what he did uncover was a large amount of spending and an insanely high debt ceiling secured by Saxavord, to the tune of around £130 million. Now, it's unknown at this time whether any of that has been used, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it is. The scope and scale of the work ongoing to bring the UK a spaceport of this scale is enormous, and it's all been privately funded, with only a small injection by the UK government via the UK Space Agency funding arm for the Fredo launch pad stool. Lockheed Martin, Skyrora and Rocket Factory Augsburg have all invested in this site too. What is worrying is that the CAA still haven't granted Saxavort a spaceport licence. Back at the start of the summer, I referred to comments made by Frank Strang that he expected a license to be forthcoming within about eight weeks or so. Well, like that scene from Apollo 13, the expected time of signal acquisition has come and gone. So where does that leave us? Quite frankly, it leaves us with more questions than answers. The first half of this year has brought more progress updates from Saxavord than perhaps expected. So why the slowdown? If a license was expected within 8 weeks, then why has it been nearly 12? Are the CAA happy with Saxavord's financial position? 
Well, they aren't going to grant a license if they can't be sure that the site has funding to continue operating. We know that Saxovord are expecting to carry out anywhere upwards of 30 launches per year, with 10 per pad, and Launchpad Elizabeth offering an option for bigger launchers, with flame diverter integration and a bigger physical footprint. But that's still some way off yet. I'd be expecting three or four launches to happen within the next year, and truthfully, only one of them to be orbital, two at most. Rocket Factory Augsburg will launch their RFA-1, and High Impulse may go for the SL-1 if it's ready, following a successful SR-75 flight. Skyrora will likely try their hand with the Skylark L, and ABL are still on the cards, but are nowhere near ready, having only had one unsuccessful flight so far in their history. After the mainstream media-led disaster that followed the Virgin Orbit flight, not this channel however, there will be more scrutiny than ever on upcoming launches. After the lambasting given to Cornwall and Virgin Orbit after January's flight, can you imagine what will happen if one of the orbital Saxivord flights fail? It was enough to drive Virgin Orbit out of business, and Cornwall still haven't launched anything since. Now, Okay, I know that's not entirely the full story, and long-time viewers will know I did a pretty detailed video on exactly why Virgin Orbit failed, because there were a lot of reasons. But for many casual observers and non-spaceflight fans, it left a sore note in the history books of this year. I do not want this for Saxivord. The CAA were very slow to grant Cornwall their license, so perhaps this is just another case of typical British triple-checking your already triple-checked documents. Further. High Impulse's launch license is granted for between December 2023 and November 2024. The inaugural SR-75 flight was actually expected by Saxivord for October 2023, so maybe this is a case of them putting the brakes on things so as not to burn through all of their cash reserves. Only one launch pad is actually required for this first flight, and RFA have already secured use of that same pad for their first launch, due in spring 2024, so quite frankly, more are not needed right now. In any case, we won't really know until someone from Saxivord speaks out and gives us a bit more information, but lips are remaining tight for now. I still hold out hope that things are on the right track, and maybe I'm a tad biased in my desire to see Scottish spaceports take shape. But even still, uh, you know, it's a worrying time with no further information, no video footage of an update at Saxivord Spaceport, and nothing to say why those contractors were sent home. Was it just an enforced summer break so that they could come back after all the hard work that they've done, fresh and ready to continue the site? Or is there a more worrying financial position? We'll have to wait and see, and wait and see if we get some more comments from Debbie and Frank. But, uh, speaking of Scottish spaceports, Orbex have just teased us with a new short film entitled The Birth of a Spaceport. This is pretty exciting as it will document their journey to making Spaceport Sutherland a reality and it gives us a peek behind the curtains at them making it happen. We've all been blessed here with Space Nessie's ventures up north to capture progress updates, so it's really great to see Orbex releasing something themselves. And this past week they dropped this first part of their upcoming new mini-series that will be released via their social channels. So do stay tuned to Orbex's X and their website for more of these videos to drop, because quite honestly this was absolutely fabulous. Staying in Scotland, mm, somewhat, AAC Clydespace, the satellite manufacturer based in Glasgow, uh, they announced last year uh, a joint project between Saab and Orbcom uh, under a joint banner called AOS, and they've given us a bit more information about what that partnership is doing. They are going to be building, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, the Ymir-1 satellite. It's a test platform designed for a proof-of-concept next-generation VDES maritime system. The VDES, or VHS Data Exchange System, is used for ship-to-shore communications, but only at coastal level. The hope with this test platform, designed by Saab and integrated onto an AAC Clydespace satellite, is by using VDES in a space-based capacity, it will greatly extend the range and allow for global communications, 
rather than being locality based and increase overall maritime safety. Orbcom will then process the data at their distribution centre. The flight is planned to take place in November 2023, which seems to indicate a likely launch from Esrange in Sweden. Esrange has been hosting sounding rockets and balloon flights for over 50 years, but has never actually had an orbital launch. That, however, is due to change in late 2023, with plans to carry out the first orbital class flight from the site. Now, it remains to be seen exactly who will carry Emir 1 to orbit, but hopefully that information will come along later on, as I've been questioning AAC Clydespace to just give us that tad bit more information. Now, finally, another exciting mission is back on the books as PLD Space's Miura 1 has been rolled back out to the launch pad in Spain. The first few launch attempts uh, at the beginning of summer got really, really close before that enforced break with a halt put on due to strict range control measures surrounding the site in an effort to prevent wildfires. Their last attempt saw the clock run all the way to zero, but one of the connectors disengaged just 0.25 seconds off time, and it was enough to force an automatic engine shutdown by the onboard computers. That was all the way back in June, but patience is a virtue, and we are now set for a further attempt, with discussions ongoing with the Spanish authorities to secure a launch date. Not only that, PLD Space have been hard at work building the Miura 5, which is set to be a fully recoverable orbital class rocket, with these sneaky peek snapshots shared on X just about a week ago. So yes, we really are on the countdown now for what should be an exciting end to 2023, with launches taking place across Europe. What do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think about the uh, silence at Saxavord. Are we still on track or is something more playing out here? Why not drop a little like and consider supporting on Patreon? I'll be back with more space news updates soon. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.